Hi everyone, welcome to our little show on why to use a travel advisor. I'm Julia Kent. I'm the Director of Government and Public Affairs at CA Atlantic and joining me today is Trudy Ritter, the manager of our Dartmouth branch as well as our group manager and two of our superhero travel advisors, uh, Stacy Gargan and Melissa Churchill. So hi everybody. Um, the reason we're here today is because on Facebook a little while ago, we did an Ask the Travel Expert post. And we got a lot of questions asking about the benefits of using a travel advisor, why you should use one. Um, Although our branches are closed um, or have been closed for approximately two months and uh, some of us are back in the office, our travel team has stayed working around the clock for our members from home. Um, at no other time has it been more obvious how valuable a travel advisor is. Um, the impact of uh, COVID-19 has far exceeded 9-11, SARS, uh, H1N1, the hurricanes that we've seen impacting travel in the past. Um, so I'm going to get the travel advisors um, and, and, and to share a few stories um, that are great examples of why always using a travel advisor is a good idea. And first, I'm going to start with Trudy. I know you have a great story um, on how CA Atlantic was there for our clients. Thank you, Julia. I believe there's many members that might not be aware of just how valuable it is to have a travel advisor as their resource, uh, not only before they leave uh, to go to their destination, but in case something happens that's going to impact their intended vacation plans when they're there. And we saw that, uh, you know, unfold uh, dramatically back on March the 13th when the Canadian government made the decision to issue their global advisory against all non-essential travel. And we knew we had people in destination. We knew we had people, um, you know, getting ready to board cruise ships uh, that next day. So later that evening, you know, many of the cruise lines began issuing suspended operation statements. And, uh, you know, one situation that, that struck me was, uh, you know, we knew it was going to be an all hands on deck type of situation because this has been unprecedented. And uh, so we all our travel team were in the next morning at 7 a.m. and and clients had actually reached out at two o'clock in the morning for guidance because she needed to return uh, as soon as possible. They were in Florida. Uh, one family member had an existing uh, medical condition that actually put them in a, in a high risk category. So um, what we were able to do is uh, first thing that morning would be able to reach out to the member and just again be that guidance, uh, find out about their specific needs and then uh, the first call that we were able to do was uh, being a, a part of our uh, Air Canada Circle of Excellence partner. I uh, was able to uh, right away um, have a faster accessibility to the medical desk and also then um, to be able to make the necessary arrangements with personal oxygen, get the reservation assistance to get them uh, rebooked in their flights uh, back home. I mean, hold times back then, we were hearing from people that um, were individual uh, clients that, you know, hold times were eight and 10 hours. So certainly by having that accessibility, we were able to coordinate the requirement, speak to the physician and, and basically get their tickets rebooked by Saturday afternoon for them to fly home Sunday morning. So uh, again, the member was so incredibly grateful and appreciated that by them making one call to us, we provided them with the resources, we were able to coordinate and we were able to provide the resolution for them to, to come home. And, and I mean, from a hotel room on a cell phone, you can appreciate like that would just been such an overwhelming task or, or, or the other option might've been just to go back to the airport. And again, that environment wasn't the best to be in and, and stand in, in long lineups to maybe be told, sorry, we can't do anything. You have to reach out to a different department. So. It certainly, um, you know, was able to provide our member with with uh, in the, the time of their need, the ability, the accessibility to to get them rebooked. And again, Sunday we were back in the office, so I, I kept monitoring the file, make sure they got home OK. And then Monday reached out to welcome them home and uh, begin the process on working on their refund for the cruise. So again, you know, we're instrumental in those things. And, and I know I'm not alone. I, I know I, I believe Stacy that she has another story that she can she can share with us as well. Yes, definitely. Uh, like Trudy mentioned, we were all in the same boat and we all have uh, multiple stories I'm sure we can share. Um, my uh, clients were actually stuck in Panama. Um, they were there for a three month stay, went in February before sort of COVID was even an issue or on anybody's 
you know, radar. And um, they had called me on the Friday and asked what the situation was. Things were, you know, kind of mellow there. No word of any major changes happening. So they said they were just going to wait it out. Well, 12 hours later, borders are closing, flights are stopping. Um, so they no longer were able to stay um, in Panama or they were not going to get home. Um, so I worked with them. Um, we had them on standby with one airline. Uh, we also had a purchased confirmed ticket as backup two days later as that was the last flight uh, leaving Panama. And then, uh, you know, 10 p.m. they were basically boarding a flight, um, going to land in Toronto, um, needing a place to stay before they could fly out the next morning. So I arranged uh, a hotel for them. And then uh, the next morning they were able to fly home uh, here to Halifax and then um, have their two week quarantine. But we basically got them out on one of the last flights. So hours on hold there, no destination rep, again, cell phones, uh, you know, not working properly. So definitely hours of work, but we were able to get them home. And um, again, multiple stories, but uh, I think we have another one from Melissa that she'd like to share. Yes, so thank you, Stacey. Um, as, as Trudy and Stacey have shown, yes, we, have, we really do have countless stories that we can talk about and share. Uh, one that sticks out in my mind in particular was that I had two couples that were on a cruise ship and they had left on the cruise well before the advisories came out, well before it seemed that, you know, COVID-19 was going to have a significant impact on cruise itineraries. So they left at the beginning of March um, and they were sailing, everything was fine. Uh, they were coming back through the Panama Canal and then coming into, uh, due, to, due to disembark in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and it, their disembarkation date happened right around the time that a, a lot of countries started shutting down their borders and not allowing cruise ships to get back uh, into port. So my clients were, you know, obviously very concerned and, and there were very long lineups on the ship uh, in order to get information, in order to, you know, per, get assistance of any sort. So they reached out to me um, immediately and were in contact by email. And basically, over the next several days, I was I was able to coordinate um, basically canceling and rebooking two different sets of flights. They were supposed to have flown out of San Juan the same day that their cruise was due to disembark, but that obviously didn't happen. And they weren't sure where and when the ship would be getting back into floor into wherever they could. So eventually the ship did come into Florida several days later. But basically, I just kept holding and canceling and rebooking flights and uh, as well as hotel accommodations until we could, you know, know what the plan would be. Um, so they the clients were incredibly grateful that they were able to reach out to me and have me handle all of those details versus having to stand in a lineup at the ship, trying to have the ship assist and also the possibility of having to um, you know, make phone calls from a cell phone at sea in international waters that would cost a fortune and be very difficult to do. So we were able to communicate back and forth easily and I did get them situated and sorted and they got and they did come home and, you know, after a few days in Florida and, and they were very grateful. So I think just examples of what we have all gone through since March goes to show the the, the vast importance of where a travel advisor can really make life so much easier and that we're happy to help. It's what we love to do. And, uh, you know, one day once we can all travel again and, and everything is looking back on track and whatnot, we will be here for you and we can't wait to do so. Well, on that note, if you have experienced a great reason, reason to use a travel advisor, and we know there are many, many great stories, please comment on this video. And with that, stay safe and stay healthy, everyone. We will see you next time. Take care.